Man, this is going to be a good episode right here. Here we go. It's the basement. I'm all like this, I'm all. The full convo recorded live <laughs> from Las Vegas, Culture Kings to be exact. I got two good friends of mine right now in studio with me, and I think this is going to be a crazy conversation. This I'm is going to be good, but a lot of insight, I think, because like, yo, the, I, I feel like I feel like the three of us like kind of share the same story. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we, we, we grew up in our hometowns. You know, we figured out we wanted more, and we literally converged here to this city that we call Las Vegas, and here we are owning our story here. Yeah. Right? Right. Right? Right? So <sighs> go ahead and introduce yourselves first. What's up? I'm Maria. Maria? I mean, you got a last name. I mean, come Romano, on. Romano, I guess, what, yeah. Uh, come on. You're Maria a brand, Romano. man. <laughs> you're a brand. Yeah, I'm Maria Romano. What's up? And I am Cindy Ninsiri, like my Instagram handle. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing else to it. No middle name. No middle name. Me parents parents did me either. dirty. You're just popping. That's you got, it. You got a middle name or no? Alvarez. 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 I probably I should. You, you know, I probably when, need I to bleep that, that out, though. I start getting a little wild. <laughs> Eric <laughs> Alvarez. <laughs> Like Alvy or something. Yeah. Alvy? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> then he starts be becoming uh, sentimental. Just call All me right, EA. Oh hey, hey, look, right, Alvy. Chill, look Alvy. Look Alvy. Look Alvy. That's your alter ego, Alvy. <laughs> so, like, you know, like I said, I, you know, I feel like the three of us. Like, you know, kind of like share the same story. Like, you know, we're, we're all from different towns. I mean, you're from Pittsburgh. You're from Salt Lake City, correct? Yeah. I'm going. You know? <laughs> I'm going this weekend. I said, yeah. So how, how, how long have, have, have you guys been, like, have you girls been here so far? Maria, you first. I've been here for eight years. Eight years. You? Same. Eight years. I got here in uh, 2015. Wow, 2015. Right. It's the been real, one hell of a journey. real good in the industry. <laughs> Well, I mean, we won't get into that. I mean, you know, you know. But, I mean, <laughs> you know I, I mean, it's been one hell of a journey, I bet. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Has. One hell of a I mean, would you say it's an uphill battle or was it coasting? Was there a lot of learning? Like, how was that learning curve? So I'm going to be honest, like I moved here in a beat up Honda Accord with a seven hundred dollar negative bank account because I paid off all my student loans in Utah. And um, I, I mean, I was at rock bottom. I slept on an air mattress for like six months. Holy shit. And it was really tough not having like blackout curtains because I worked in the industry. And mm -hmm. so I didn't get much sleep. And um, I also came out of a really bad, I would say a breakup, not a bad relationship because he was good to me. But unfortunately, um, he had an addiction to pain pills. So I knew that if I didn't leave Utah, I don't know where I'd be today, probably in that with him. So... Um, it's it's definitely been more of an up uphill battle than anything, mm -hmm. and I've definitely wanted to give up sometimes. Wow, wow! I I never knew that. We've been close friends for a long time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it's, crazy. It's, this is a very revealing, like you know, episode right here. Well, the the thing is, is that um, too much like what you see on my Instagram, you're gonna see a lot of positivity in the highlights, right? Because all you see on people's Instagram is highlight reels, but very true. You don't see the things that they did to get here. So I'm sure we all have some kind of story because at some point in your life, you said, I need to get out of my hometown. It was like a turning point. It was that catalyst moment. It was that rock bottom moment that you said, if I do not leave here, I'm going to get sucked up into the darkness that's here. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, what about you, Maria? How, what, what was that moment where you were just like, all right, well, I, mean, I got to get to Vegas. Yeah, I mean, you know, Pittsburgh is a, is a small city and I kind of had already... Great hockey team, though. Great hockey team. Great yeah, amazing team. hockey team. I mean, yeah. you know, the the city rides for you know the people that are that are from there. So that's something that is just, you know, one of the places that you know it's very unique and it's very home hometown feel. And you know, everyone kind of supports everyone and loves everybody and all that good stuff. But uh, I had already been DJing for a long time, and I kind of had already played at all the nightclubs, through my own parties, and all that. By the time I was twenty one. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I was playing a little bit more like New York, New Jersey. So I thought for like a second I was going to move there because I had like an ex that I was like, she was from there. And so I was going there a lot. And I liked the the drive of, of New York and the city and, and all that. And it was either that or Vegas. And uh, at the time, my brother was married. Mm -hmm. And I was... I'm very a big fan of Shout my brother. Shout out to your brother. He by was the way. Yeah, I, yeah. I've known your brother for a very long time. Met him yeah. once at Squally's, and he's a great guy. Yeah, he's, yeah. Shout he's out to Squally cool. one wow. time. He's I yeah. love Squally. Hey, man. Squally's Cafe, man. Yeah, the so. Best avocado toast in the city. <laughs> I mean, I'll put it up. Yeah, I agree. Um, but he had gotten divorced, and I was like, all right, cool, because I didn't really like your ex, so I didn't want to move here for you know and be a part of that. So get a two bedroom, and I'll and I'll move in with you and. Uh, you know, as you know, like you said, you've known him for a long time. So 
he was already like out and about in the city and uh so i felt good about coming here yeah uh so it was kind of one of those things where he's like look i'm gonna introduce you to everybody but this is like on you i'll help you as much as i can but you know you gotta you gotta do it yourself i'm not gonna just you know give you everything laid out because his story is a little similar to yours where when he moved here he had you know sleeping on the floor and all that stuff so i kind of had a little bit of a easier start but it still was the same mindset of like i gotta i gotta mm -hmm. get what i came here for you know you and have so, to have thick skin to live in this this city period no i don't i mean we talk about this all the time like right. you know we, we're, we're on text message going like god damn you gotta protect your energy out oh yeah i mean this city will, you gotta this city will as much as it'll be tough as much as it uplifts, uplifts you it'll bring you all the way down so i feel like it's it's no, it's not always an uphill battle. Sometimes it's it's great. Sometimes it's coasting. And sometimes it's uphill. You know, it's just constant like this. I feel like, for, at least for me, you know. So I think protecting your energy is like the most is so important because you got to stay positive or you will give up. Did you guys you have like, good childhoods? Yeah. Mm, I I like to say yes. You know, I I think me and my father probably. Uh, Probably could have had a better um, relationship as I was growing up. You know, I was a little troubled growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I hung out with the wrong crowd, this and that. But, but I will say this, like, I'm pretty sure he's thankful today that I found DJing because DJing kind of pulled me out of that. You know, I was just around the wrong people all the time. I was around. Well, you grew man. up in the Bay, right? I grew up in the Bay. Yeah. So, I mean, so you know, it gets real out there. And, and I found my way into the, just certain circles that I probably shouldn't have been in, you know. But DJing kind of like, you know, brought me out of that. I started interning at KMEL at 15 years old. I mean, you guys know how old I am. I won't put it on camera because, I mean, people <laughs> people think I'm 26, but, you know. Keep it right? Ain't that right, Keep Albert? <laughs> <laughs> I think I told our, our – shout out to Albert who's uh, shooting the uh, the interview right now. I told him my age. He was like, no way. I was like, bro, I'm Filipino. Of course. We don't age. We don't age. You really don't. Asians don't age. For real. You really don't. It's but, great, yeah. Though. Good for you. <laughs> you know, yeah, I started interning at KMEL when I was, like, 15 years old under Franzen. Which is crazy. So I've Franny, known him. Good old like, Franny. I've known him like half my life. Or actually, no, a little bit more now. He makes me feel like a celebrity when I go to Dre's. You are a celebrity when you go to Dre's. No. What are you talking about? No. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, but it's just funny because uh, he'll be like, okay, Cindy, I see you. And I could be all the way at a table that I wouldn't think he could even see me. I was like, you know what? Keep gassing me. This is cute. Yeah, I definitely say I. I <laughs> His his mic skills are his mic skills are are there. They're, yeah. they're he's got a great um, his he's got a good voice. His presence there. is his presence, um, that's what it is. His stage it, presence. He's there. He's there. You know he's there. He's yeah. like the Drake of DJs. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when he talks, you just want to listen. Like yeah, huh? Yeah, like yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like you know what state you're in. You can be inebriated and I remember you like, still want to hear it. Starting at Dre is like just like I gotta I gotta take some you some know notes. some notes from this man because his presence on. On the mic. He's was, got mojo. You know, he's got swag. Yeah. You know, so. growing up, I mean, and literally interning under him, like, it was definitely interesting. Like, you know, I spent, like, you know, a good amount of time, like, like learning a lot of things. Like, I wouldn't be an on-air personality or a radio DJ unless, like, I was around him. Yeah. And, like, I remember when I was growing up and someone asked me what I wanted to be when I was, like, in my 20s at the time, you know, damn, I'm aging myself like crazy right now. But... I you know I remember saying I was I wanted to be a dual threat on the radio. I want to be able to play records, but at the same time I want to be like a dope on air personality. I want to be able to have those strong conversations with like a celebrity or or even just like you know being able to engage with a listener. Yeah. And Franzen's always been the king of that. Yeah. The king of that. I remember when um when he got fired from KML, and then I actually was producing the night show that came on after him that 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 succeeded him. Um. People used to call for years, seven, eight years, asking if he was coming back. <laughs> seven, eight years asking if he was coming back, and I would not even run it past anything that people still do call that radio station asking if he's coming back. That's yeah. crazy. You're like, y'all y'all messed that up. That ship has sailed. <laughs> like, you slept on him. You could just go ahead and lie in that bed you made. <laughs> I mean, shit. Drake went to go see him this weekend yeah. at Dre's awesome. all over the internet. I've seen that. Yeah, that you know awesome. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's doing quite well for himself. So. Yeah. You know, um, what's an incredible story that that you guys can share about the impact of of, of what you guys do? Like, you know, you have a, a very successful podcast, Cindy. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say that 
I appreciate that you say is successful. It's still it is. In the you get more views than me. <laughs> it's still in the works. <laughs> um, it's not where I need it to be. I fell off a little bit last year because I was really depressed. And um, when you are depressed, it's really hard to create because, you know, your, your mind's so foggy and like I couldn't even get out of bed last year. So um, my story is, is that like I had a really I'm just going to say it right now. I had a fucked up childhood like my dad was on drugs. He beat the shit and I'm not talking to spanked. I'm talking this guy straight full blown punched me in my face multiple times. I'm so sorry. My to hear mom, this. she's still struggles with her alcohol addiction. Mom, I love you. Um, but I'm just telling you now, like my dad had to go fishing um, because we were that poor. We couldn't afford food. Like we were on welfare and I went to a school with a bunch of kids who were LDS where their parents are still married. What's but, LDS? Uh, Latter-day Saints or okay. Mormon. Mm -hmm. And I got called an orphan multiple times. Um, I got spit at in my face just because they called me like a chink because in Utah it's mostly Caucasian there. So like all I got to say is like I had a really fucked up childhood. Every card against me. Like I'm surprised that I'm not a prostitute selling my soul on drugs. So for me that's my like impeccable crazy story because if I can take what I've learned throughout the years and be like, yo, if you're going to move to this city, I want you to do it the right way. I want to give you some words of wisdom and I want to help you know that you're not the only one because I promise you there are multiple people, many people out in the, in, in the city that have gone through really fucked up shit but they are just scared to talk about it. Yeah. So I come from a place of trauma and I knew if I didn't move out of Utah and do something for myself, then um, I was literally gonna probably die because I did want to kill myself multiple times. And I know that this is deep, but this is where I'm getting it's with, real with to you. Bottle Girl Diaries. So yeah, yeah. Bottle Girl Diaries originally was supposed to be a book. And um, the people I thought I needed to flirt with or kiss ass to get a job. And then Quarantine hit and um, I preached or I um, excuse me. I proposed Bottle Girl Diaries as a book to my my best friend Brian Spinelli. He's also my cameraman. He was my previous editor. Now I'm editing. It sucks. You making me do it all by myself and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was depending on him, um, and now he's like, I'm in law school. I'm like. <laughs> I have to edit alone. This is ghetto. Hey, he's <laughs> going to defend you in court one day. Yeah, yeah he is going to defend, yeah. defend you in court one day. I think that's a great um, investment. So, Bottle so. Girl Diaries, he, I was like, yo, like, I don't know why I want to do this, but I'm, I'm like bored. I can't just sit around and do this. And I didn't have my unemployment. I was pretty broke during quarantine, right? Like, I didn't work for, what, 18 months? Yeah. And I didn't get my unemployment for the 10 months. I was one of the people in the state of Nevada that didn't get their unemployment. So, uh, I'm going to be honest. Like, I hit up some of my friends that are wealthier, and I was like, hey, you know, I I can't pay. You got to do bills. what you got to do. I can't pay my bills right now. Yeah. And then, anyways, I had extra money, so I got the equipment for the channel, and then we just started rolling with it. And at first, like, I was so serious with Bottle Girl Diaries, and my friends like, "Why are you trying to be like Connie Chung?" I don't know if you remember who Connie Chung is, but of she's course. like an OG news reporter. Who was she married to? Mari uh, Povich. I. Yeah. She was married to Mari yeah. Povich. Yeah. Yeah, Mari was fine too. <laughs> <laughs> Mari Povich was you good looking. You <laughs> are not the father. No, that's Jerry Springer, right? No, that's Mari Povich. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm a but, big Mari fan, man. So where I was getting at with that is Bottle Girl Diaries has given me a lot of something to look forward to because I'm able to like inspire in different ways. And I think that like a lot of people don't have respect for Bottle Girls, um, which I can understand why because there is those girls who do live in that stigma of the Bottle Girls. Uh, but I wanted to just be out there and be like, you know what? We're real people. We go through real shit. There are, you know, some good girls in this industry. Um, and for me, I'm like, if I can, you know, kind of build a name for myself and build myself up, then why can't others? And I want to get a little bit more deep in Bottle Girl Diaries as well. Hey, and, I'm and just saying, like, I'm mad. I haven't, she hasn't asked me to be on there yet because I want to be on there, you know? Because you know? it's dope. I, I like it. It's a... It's cool, you know. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And actually, Maria, you are up on that list. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I think I just got um, Amber Bug on there, you know, and, and she's got a huge following. So, like, you know, it's not easy to reach out to a lot of people to come on your channel. But one thing I can say is what will get you far as this, in the city is just being a good person and treating people right. Because... Um, and these are all things that you pretty much preach through all these episodes right, and, right, right. and display, like just so like, you know, people can see the, 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 
the correct side. Right. You know, the not 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 the smoke and mirrors right. and all the preconceived notions of like you know what bottle girls are, but like yo, like just like you said, we're we're real people. Like we we're, we're nice too. We don't bite. You know what I'm saying? Like like you know, forget that bullshit. Well, like this is I what it really is. Is I get hit up by a lot of hosts and DJs, especially guys. And they're like, oh, I want to come on, you know? I'm like, okay, yes. I do. I've had, I have had a couple guys on. But here's the thing. Like, the reason why I'm very strong on women empowerment and cultivating a community for women, the reason why I'm so strong on that is because of this, is if you can inspire, educate, and teach a woman her morale, she's going to then take that into her family household and then teach the generations on and on and Amen. on, right? So yeah. we have to protect women because women, is, in general, we are always looking over our shoulders you know, we, we really don't still have a lot of rights, you know, doesn't matter what color we are. Mm -hmm. And um, also, too, we're always the ones in danger. You know, we some women are the oppressed. So um, I think Bottle Girl Diaries is, you know, the reason that's kind of why it's very strong on women empowerment. So to anybody answering questions like, oh, why do you have more hosts on there? Why don't you have guy bartenders on there? I mean, there is a certain niche with it yeah it's not so necessarily right and story. you were actually and truly i say this well with all honesty you are up in the running to come on because it's a female dj why not you know yeah but i choose my people wisely mm -hmm. i don't just have anybody come on as you should you know for sure because i'm all about energy yeah so energy doesn't lie people no yeah, it doesn't but lie i, I want to say to you thank you for not only being a friend but like a mentor and um you said something to me the other day that nobody's ever said to me and i really appreciated it because sometimes I feel like I do get overlooked, even though I'm not looking for outside validation. But sometimes it it it's tough. Goes a long way though. Yeah, outside it, validation it, gives you the the little you know push that you need to you need keep it on moving. You, you know, yeah. but you told me that I had the gift of cultivating community, and I'll take that compliment any day over. Oh, she's Hell bad. Yeah. Like anybody, we have a lot of beautiful faces in Vegas. Like let's be real. But there's a lot of people who don't have that it factor, and I think for me cultivating community like i feel good when i go to sleep at night knowing that i'm bringing that to the table and, and it, it's incredible to watch because i remember you facetimed me during the pandemic <laughs> um hey, he, I was, he's, was uh, i crying twitching, was I all yeah. drunk? <laughs> I, dude i was drinking on the internet <laughs> you at the time. drinking a lot and, I, and I, I think i text you on the side like if you don't sit your ass down somewhere and then he'd be like oh i'm sick i'm out because you don't sit your ass down get, nowhere you get know? on at 8 p.m get on at 8 p.m <laughs> it, yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty fun it was pretty fun but i remember you facetimed me during the pandemic and you had asked me you know some advice about how to put a podcast together and stuff like that. So, you know, I want to give you your flowers and, and let you know that, Thank like, you. yo, it's it's been amazing to watch these last three years and seeing, like, you know, I remember um, reading a tweet or or something, and it was about, like, I think it was like during audition season, and I, you you mentioned something about, like, you know, this uh, this young lady that came up to you and said, like, hey, look, I've been watching your podcast for a minute. I took everything that you said, and now I'm here auditioning. I got a job. Thank you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this podcast. It's awesome, and that's man. impact. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's the type of impact that, that pushes the culture forward. You know what I mean? So I just know what it's like to be that girl that comes into Vegas and not know anything about the industry. And listen, like, that whole audition process is a cattle call. It's scary. So if I was able to help somebody, I'm definitely doing my job. You know, I think the one thing that we can all, yes, we all want to be wealthy. And don't lie if you say that you don't. Everybody wants to be wealthy because wealth brings freedom. Wealth brings stability true. in the future. Wealth brings security for your family. But if you just do what you do with heart and passion, just like you do, um, and you be of service to others, all the accolades will come. 100%. And Maria, you, you're one of the rising stars of Yay. the city. You know what I mean? When, 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 I mean, I've lived here for about a year now, but obviously I've known about you forever. And, you know, you've became one of like, you know, one of my really close friends also. Like, you know, we've became pretty much like brother and sister at this you point. You up on people. Let me tell nah. you something about this girl. <laughs> I just want to say, okay. So about this time last year, I was really depressed. And I was like, God, you know what? Just give me something to look forward to. Give me a sign. And she hit me up. And she's like, hey, I want to work with you. We need to do some events. One thing I like about you is you didn't give up on me. You don't give up on people easily. And, like, I literally got that call the next day. And I told you that, right? Yeah. So yeah. one thing about you is I think that when you see good in people, you you will, like, let them know. You give credit where it's due. 
Yeah, I try and, to help um, as many people as I can. You and know? I love watching you DJ because I love watching your little <laughs> foot shake when you're. Oh yeah, the tap, the tap, man. <laughs> All right, the I'm tap, the famous, the, tap? the famous tap that I that I get filmed every the time. Happy I'm on foot? The happy foot. Yeah, it's either like the one foot or it's both, you know, because I just can't stop moving. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I try to keep the energy, so I just I have to keep it moving. So that, I mean, that's a great segue right there, you know, talking about how you do events and, you know, you do a lot of collaborations with other people in the city. You have a marketing agency. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. And I don't think a lot of people even really know that. No, I haven't really, like, launched it really, like, yet just because uh, I'm trying to well, Yeah, because you're too busy make making all this fucking <laughs> money right now. That's why. I'm strategically trying to make sure I launch it the right way and and all that. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've been creating events since I was really in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to throw my own parties and stuff just because, like, I'm from Pittsburgh, but I'm really, uh, it's fr I'm from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, so it's really small. small. Not a lot going on. Does it on. snow there? Oh, it's freezing. It's freezing. <laughs> so this snow that you're <laughs> you know, seeing here is like bullshit Yeah, I'm like, whatever. Like, you know, yeah. You know, like, because like, hey, I used to wake up in the morning people, and be like, oh, fuck I hope, off. I hope they snow. cancel school. I hope they cancel school. It's snow day, you know? But yeah, I mean, in high school, I was throwing parties. Like, I threw like a stoplight party. Red if you're single. Yellow That's if it's complicated. Cute. Green. Wow. I mean, green if you're single. Red if you're taking. I was uh, like, yellow, red if you're single. Yeah, yellow if it's complicated. And. <laughs> I used to throw, if you like swing for both sides or <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever the, it's complicated. So yellow, you know, uh, or all three, you know, depending on the week. Oh my God. Uh, so I, I've been doing that for a long time. And even, um, when I went to college, I was trying to get into the clubs, trying to get into the clubs and, you know, just like anything else, no one really notices you until you're doing something. So I was like, you know what? I walked past this like venue one time and I was like, I'm just going to throw a party here. Fuck it. <laughs> like, I was, I'm just going to do it. And so I got a couple of my friends together and this is back home. This is back home when I'm yeah. like 19. Uh, and I and I make 2000 flyers and I go to, you know, I, every college around. So there's Duquesne University, Pitt University, Carlo, which is like a smaller like nursing school, Point Park, which where I, where I went to, uh, which is like a performing arts school. And I just literally went to door to door, every dorm and just passed out flyers and my friends helped me and all this. And so. It turned into like this big party that I used to have. Like a lot of my friends who are somebody today used to come, and like even all my friends from college still talk about it. The place was called Mexico City, and it was <laughs> wild. Like I used to throw. The place parties. was called Mexico it, City. It called Mexico City. Yeah, in, in, that was the in, party in, or the city? in the middle of Pittsburgh. In the middle of Pittsburgh, there was a restaurant called Mexico City that had upstairs okay, where they used to do okay. salsa dancing. I want to go to this place. I was like, dude, it was legendary. I mean, like, I need open? to go to this place. No, I think someone else. <laughs> I said, is it still open? Dude, I mean, I had people, kids buying bottle service, like just crazy shit, like just wild stuff. And so then, you've sure enough, you've been a pioneer. You've been a pioneer. Yeah, I mean, with creating events, like I just love it. And uh, sure enough, after that, then the club started calling me, and and then one by one, oh, I want to throw, a I want you to come here and do a college night, do a college night, because what was happening is I was taking all the kids that were going to these clubs for college night, these eighteen and overs. And they were coming, and I had lines down the street, and it was it was awesome, you know. That's amazing. And then you awesome. know, moving here, uh, I didn't really do too much of that. I, I did one party with Dustin Dre. Shout out to Dustin. Shout out to Dustin. Shout out to Dustin. We did it's a my new, guy. we did a New Year's industry party at the Palms before they renovated. I mean, we had everybody in there, like Paulie D, Antonio Gates, like all these crazy people, and we just. Had Patron sponsor it, and it was wild. Definitely so like, a long way from Mexico City. A huh? long way from Mexico City. <laughs> Dustin broke his elbow playing basketball because it was the the hard the hard hardwood or hard yeah the hardwood suite yeah, yeah. I remember. And then I know, miss those parties, man. They were fun. They were fun. There's nothing like that now. I yeah, there's nothing like that now. But then that's where I came into you know I love to create events, and so I created the marketing company to do that, and then now I've created uh, a party called Brunch Club University that is fun because. You know, that's just something that's mine that I don't have to worry about what anybody else says to me. No, like, nobody can tell me, oh, uh, you know, you, you have to play this or don't do this or don't do that. It's literally my creation from the way it looks to what the waitresses wear to well, how it sounds, know, how it sounds, the whole thing, you know, so which I which I love. And then I love, obviously, we did an event together e and doing events and just highlighting people that, you know, are overlooked because they're not, it's not big, you know, like huge. Uh, people here, you know, everyone's used to, be, it's gotta be big, it's gotta be massive. Cause yeah. you know, the, these clubs fit 4,000 people. They, everything has to be massive. So until you get to that point, nobody really, you know, gives you a, a shot, you know, with different things. So th that was just something that was fun and just other impactful moments. Like I talked about Franny with the mic. 
one time I was headlining at Dre's and I was young and uh you know, you know BA. Of course, yeah. And uh, BA is one of the one real, realest motherfuckers in the city, but mm -hmm. he will tell you what's up. And one time, you know, my voice just like was not it, you know, and especially coming from like Franny, you know. And so he was. He's a he, tough act to follow. Ooh, yeah. And so I I, I'll never forget times. like Dustin and BA are like ready to pull my mic and stuff. And like the next day, like I called up Robbie Hardy and I was like, I need you to give me uh, a voice lessons teacher because I need to learn how to talk on the mic because that's something that I need to get good at that I never really did too much of and never really took it as an art. And I need, need to do that because, you know, I respect BA a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through that situation again, you know? So I literally, you know, took voice lessons and now I'm comfortable with it. And I really got comfortable when I was, um, during quarantine, when the only place you could go to was Bloom. You know, and I threw parties there every fucking day, it's, it's and that's so, where I got comfortable man. doing Bruh. whatever I wanted. And that's where I think it also that's where like it was a little bit of a turning point for me, where people were like, I was like the only person doing anything still, you know. And I was putting people on, you know, to, to DJ, but that was like the turning point of like shit. I remember oh, you were booking Romeo at the time too. Parties. Yeah, yeah, I remember Romeo was de doing, uh, you know, nights at Bloom and. You know, I was like super conservative during yeah. like the pandemic. So I'd be like, dude, you're crazy, yeah. man. What the fuck? Day, They're yeah. blowing right. fucking hookah out yeah. there. Well, I, was like, I was like, listen, if I don't wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> the bloom days were yeah, fun. Yeah, so that kind of that kind of helped me uh, push through for after quarantine to keep myself relevant. I think that kept me relevant because I'm not a Twitch person or like a podcast person. I would like to be, but those are things that I need a little bit more of a push for. But Throwing parties is like, that's just like what I love to yeah, do. For sure. So, Passion. Yeah, that helped me get to this point now, you know, so. And, and you have a couple residencies in town. Yeah. Where, Dre's, where are you playing at right now? Dre's, Daylight, Zook, and IU, you know. Mm -hmm. So those are all, basically, you know, Dre's and Daylight are the same kind of format of music, but, you know, Zook and IU, that's a whole different genre, which I enjoy being pushed to those to those limits and, Connecting with different uh, crowds and different wants and needs that people, mm -hmm. you know, expect when when you're there. So for sure, it definitely has helped me grow as a as a DJ. You know, because I mean, up until I was like 18, 19, I didn't even know what EDM music was. You know, I was just straight <laughs> hip hop. Like that. That's, that's dope, it. though. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. What's you your know? favorite kind of music to play? Man, you really want to know? Yes. It might disappoint you. No, it might I, disappoint I, you. I love all music. My favorite music to play, I would say, like personally. Yeah, personally. Probably seventies and eighties. Okay, it's a cool vibe. I, I wish yeah, I actually was a little bit more uh, you? like intelligent in the, in that genre. Oh, I got crates on crates on crates because it's cool. It's just it's just you know, and a lot of that music is sampled in today's music, so it's just like you know. I actually had to learn seventies and eighties and open format and mashups and shit like that because I was like that kid in San Francisco growing up, like people were scared to book me because I was like the hyphy kid. Like, you know, during like 05, 06, you know, I was running around e like the streets with E40 and shit like that. And people would be, people would be scared to book like, you know, the hip hop kid. They thought you was going to crump and hit them, huh? They thought I was going to, they thought, they thought <laughs> I was going to bring Oakland with yeah, me. That's yeah, what they thought. Yeah, that's exactly. and it was fucked up, you know, yeah. but like, you know, the, the, but I, I had to learn like, you know, open format because I want, I didn't want to not just, sit there in, in, in San Francisco not playing at the hot spots and that was what they needed at the time right. so I actually had to learn like Madonna I remember the first time seeing um, seeing fucking um, Like a Virgin play in a big ass room with the cone titties yeah, that that video, dude. I was like <laughs> mind blown. Like I, I I used to put ice the waffle um, pointed ice cream cone on my boobs and try to tape it because I would watch her and. I think that's where it all started. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like a virgin and um, a holiday, you know? Oh, yeah. That, that holiday. Yeah. yeah all, uh, all, what's all your that favorite shit. music to play? Yeah, what's your favorite music to play? I mean, forget I, my story. <laughs> I mean, yeah, forget you. Yeah. No, like I, said, I, <laughs> I grew up on hip hop and R&B. You know, I, I love R&B. That's why I love playing, you know, uh, Sim City. But honestly... I love re true love for like reggae and that music. Like I just love the really? the culture behind it. You mm. know, maybe because I I love 
Latin girls. Yeah, maybe because I like <laughs> to the women. You know, but but music or Latin girls. You know so let's mean? keep it real here. <laughs> I like that. You I know? like that. I like the flavor, but no, I mean, yeah, that's just like a you know, that's the vibe for me. So what what keeps you guys, you know, hustling? What's the drive behind it? What's the inspiration to keep going? Like you know, there 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 there's 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 a purpose behind all this. You know, it's not easy to be in this business. No. You know, it's not easy at all. You know, but I want to know what 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 allows you guys to continue. I think for me is just being able to, you know, make people have a good time. You know, and and seeing crowds' reactions and and you know knowing that you know I left. DJ, like left the stage and everybody had a had a blast and just impacting people's nights you know and taking care of my friends and and put, helping people get into positions that you know they want to get into let me add this you take good care of your friends because i've walked home not walked home but i've definitely like stumbled into my crib a few times <laughs> so speaking of taking care of people yeah like... I, I love making sure everyone has a good time you know if you come come and support me like i will always make sure you are good to go and taken care of with, you know, maybe one, two, or 15 shots of tequila. I don't know however many you're willing to go back and back with me. For. It's fun, though. It's, <laughs> it's fun. fun, you know? So I think it's it's those me the, those moments that mm. are, are very important to me and creating those memories with people. You like you, know? you like giving ex good experiences. That's yeah, it's I all think. about the experience. Yeah. It's about, you know, waking up five years from now and being like, you know, you remember that one time? I do that now, and it yeah. fucking hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cindy, so, what about you? What keeps me going? Uh, just like I said, my childhood, just to know that like I came up from so much. I came out the mud, really. Um, I'm going to be honest, though, too. Like in Utah, <clears throat> I left because I, I just wasn't on the same vibration as a lot of them girls. Um, a lot of religious and political things got in the way. And to be honest... I really just want to prove a lot of people wrong. Um, you don't feel like you have, eh, like, I, it's it's I'm 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 a perfectionist and I'm so hard on myself and that's probably where my days of depression or not wanting to get out of bed or wanting to give up is. I, I'm the one that's hard on myself. I'm too hard on myself. I could tell you right now I have six videos that I recorded that never published. Because I was, bro, they're pick, probably I think, amazing. I, I think I, that's why I don't like to get on TikTok because it's just really? like I just like yeah. just don't look. Well, right. TikTok's a good. whole different. Yeah. But you know, it's still it's still videos and being out videos. there. I'm like, yeah. this, this ain't it. You know, like but, it's, tough. Um, it's it's tough to you know. I have a family. You know, like I have family in Thailand that I would love to take care of. When I'm wealthy, just like I think it's uh, Denzel Washington, he says, "Reach back and take someone with you. Reach back." And I think I that um, I have been anointed in this world to help others. And just continue giving the gift that keeps on giving, right? And just being a good person. And like I said, you know, um, I also need to prove myself wrong. Because since I was a little girl, I'm going to tell you something right now. I always dreamed of having my own talk show. I don't know if anybody remembers Ricky Lake. Of course. That was my shit. So um, Ricky Lake was the, I was, always was the said shit. I was going to have my own talk show. I, I don't know what it was, but I always wanted to be in front of a television. I love being on camera. I enjoy it. Um, because if I'm given that platform to be able to reach the ears of, of whoever needs to hear that message on that day and at that time, whether it's something funny, inspirational, some tea, whatever it may be, because I got a lot of tea. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> living it, living it I got a lot of tea. Um, <laughs> living in Vegas, uh, there's tea that, That's basically what it is. But, you know, I really do want to take care of my family. I want to retire my mom early. And, you know, I want the freedom. I love to travel. I want to travel the world. And you can't do that without money, right? But for me, like I said, I'm doing what I'm doing with heart, with passion. And then the rest of the accolades will follow. And um, one thing that I could say that all of us are good at is don't let nobody put you in a fucking box and tell you you need to focus on one thing. Because you're good at a lot of different things. You're good at a lot of different things. And I'm good at a lot of different things. Take a few. Do those. Try them out. Everything is trial and tribulation. And you're not like a real entrepreneur if you haven't failed, if you haven't been broke, if your bank account wasn't negative, if you spent money. I've spent money on gifts for the girls for the channel um, and drew, overdrew my account because of it. And I know I didn't have to do that, but, you know, I, I went through some shit during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't give a shit what anybody says because I'm like, at the end of the day, what may be tea for some people? Oh, Cindy, we did this. She what? She did that. She was broke. It. That's my testimony. I think. It's your story. I mean, I think uh, it's your journey. I yeah. think entre entrepreneurship definitely comes with that. <laughs> yeah. You Being know? broke. Sleepless yeah, nights. and I think there's so many times I've I've spent, you know, so much money on like taking care of people. You know, like I was on the phone with my sister today, and she's like, yeah. "Why did you spend that money on you know?" My husband and his friends, you know, when, when you took him out on Thursday, and I'm like, I just, you know, I you just have to have a good energy about like to take though. care of people. Yeah, yeah, you know, my sister's my therapist. She told me I needed to say that on here today. So. <laughs> oh my god! She said you're only going to talk. She said you're only going to talk about your brother. So make sure you put me. Oh, oh my god! Thomas forgot. So I was like, let me go ahead and slip that in real quick. What's your sister's name? Josie. Josie. Yeah, I used to joke around with her because she's uh, 18 years older than me. Mm -hmm. So I'm like the baby baby. You know, my Pasquale is 11 years older than me. And my brother Antonio and my sister Josie are 18 years older than me, and I used to, I used to like, joke around when we'd go to the store and be like, "Hey mom, hey mom," she's like, "Stop doing oh, that." Oh wow, that, <laughs> that hurts me. Yeah, yeah. That's jeez. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, our, our family likes to bust balls. So, but yeah, we love busting balls. That's it, man. You have to have, you have to have a, you know, a fun we, side. We love a good busting balls session. Oh yeah, I mean. <laughs> That's why we're friends, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we're friends. Yeah. But, oh, man. You know, Cindy, back to you real quick. You know, like, and, and, and I, I always bring this up every time we talk. You know, I feel like, you know, you've become, like, you know, the standard when it comes to, uh, you know, bottle service girls, you know, and, and you know, how, how much insight you're able to, to share with other people. You know, you just shared your why. Let me ask you, like, you know, what's what's next in line with that like you know what, what what what's the bigger play after that like after i hang up the heels or just with my life in general uh, just, yeah, you know i mean because i mean you, you you like i said like i would read some of the stories that you would share and like you know people you know reach out to you and say like yo man like you weren't lying audition season fucking sucks da, 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 da. or hey like i did everything you did yeah. and i'm here today you know, and I actually know like maybe like two or three of those girls too. So like, yeah. you know, but what's what 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 what's the the bigger play after that? You would say somewhat of a challenging question, but yeah, you know. it's definitely a challenging question. So I'm currently in that um, season of my life right now, where as much as I have loved being in this industry, I've created the opportunities for myself. I've made great money. Um, when I hang up the heels for me. I want to leave my mark like, yo, didn't nobody do it like Cindy did and Siri do it. She didn't just come in and collect her envelope and just, you know, do this and that. She came here and um, she created space for for girls to come in and feel comfortable in this city. And I so feel like you're like uh, like you've created a crusade pretty much. Thank you. You know what I mean. That that, that that that's what what support, what comes to mind. You, you know, you you. Always, I, I do the best I yeah. can. Um, I have my moments. You know, because to be honest with you, like, she'll, she knows. She'll be like, what are you doing? Come out. And I'm like, I'm at home taking a Himalayan salt bath. I'm yeah. meditating. And she's like, bitch, what? Come out here. And I'm like, no, I'm not drinking for like three days. I'm fasting. She's like. Not drinking for yeah. three days. Yeah. Okay. Not, like, what? Like, you maybe. know, I just got to take my time. Um, like, All right. You know, when we're planning these events, I know I got to like be patient with her because like that Himalayan salt bath is like a do not disturb. I will get back to you tomorrow you know um, which i appreciate because yeah. you need that and like not you but people need that and i struggle with that like i will always answer my phone you know i never take a second and i wish i had a little bit more of of that i had to find you know. that piece because i think that if you are connected to your phone a little bit too much that's why people more nowadays have depression anxiety um they're not able to focus and concentrate um, our brains are all fucked up from EMS free, EMF frequency. Um, and so I really, really practice that. But the end game for me is I just want to make an impact and be able to have a platform to share that. And so obviously I think there was a reason why we have been aligned and mm -hmm. you've been helping me. And I just, I'm so grateful. Um, I can't express the gratitude that I have for you because, you know, if I were to tell you, how many people I've reached out to. Hey, may I come on your podcast? You know, you have a really good following and I, I can come up with a topic we can talk about. No, 
no, or we'll see. Or, you know, I do get overlooked a lot. I've had a lot of doors slam shut in my face, and it's not always the most comfortable thing to reach out to people and ask them for things, and you just get no, no, no. All right, no problem. You know what I mean? You can't take that shit personal. You just have to realize, like, what's meant for you will come. But in the long run, um, success to me is just leaving my mark, and that's, like, life after. Um, I think the end goal, like I said, I would like to create or open up some new doors of opportunity platforms to be able to speak on and not just promote what I'm doing, but promote what you're doing and what you're doing and just keep on giving the gift of community and support. For sure. For sure. Um, Do you both feel that like, you know, sometimes you guys don't get your flowers for what you guys do for the culture? All the time. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think, like I said, it's sometimes you do and sometimes you don't, you know, and I've just had to learn to, not take it personal and just keep on just keep on going you know Mm -hmm. i think uh i always struggle with like comparing myself to like a you or like a franny or whatever and uh like no like having to understand like I am a little bit younger, not to, you know, not to say you're Hey, I'm, I don't take it offensive. You know, but I don't I've take had it to, offensive. I've had to you're like, fine. You're good. <laughs> I've had to like, you know, tell myself like, hey, you know, just keep on going. You know, like you're not, your time isn't, isn't running out tomorrow, you know? For sure. So I, I, I feel like I struggle with that. Like I, you know, I was always like, I got to do this now. And if I don't get here by this age and it's not, you know, like when I was in my 20s, even though I just turned 30, but like my earlier 20s. I struggle with that. Like, if I don't do this by this age, then then I'm just not gonna make it. Then it's just not gonna work. And you can now, never really follow a model. No, like, and now you know I mean? and now like, like as I've gotten older, I'm deck like of I gotta. Different. I just gotta keep on going and not worry about the, like stop thinking that there's a uh, a a time no ticking. Timeline. You know, like stop hearing that tick that doesn't exist. You know, and then you know just keep on moving and going with the with the next thing. You know. Yeah, and I mean, for me, you I never I, know what phone call you're gonna get. No, 100%, like, you know. And, hey, you want to DJ think, the Golden Knights game? Like, okay, sure. Like, yeah. you don't and know we're what we're going to talk gonna, about that. Yeah. We're definitely going to talk about that. But, you know, I, re- I remember, you know, coming out here for the first time 15 years ago. Um, first, what was the first venue I did? It was uh, the Stratosphere. Fucking Stratosphere. I don't Man, even think people I've go never there. Been there. I'm scared. <laughs> My friend the other day was like, you want to go ride the rides there? I was like, uh, mm. no, but I'll like support you I, and that I, I kind of want to go there just for the energy because that's where it started for me out here yeah. but i will say this though like you know being out here for quite a long time and seeing phases of people like throughout the years like you know it's all it's always a new crowd like every fucking like you know few years out here but you know i feel like you know you two like 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 i said like you know in the beginning we we, we share kind of the same story like we're we're constant we're consistent we're still here you know, we're still fighting. Yeah. We're still doing what we do, you know. Like, there's – it's almost like, you know, to a thing to where I can kind of say, like, you know, I feel like, you know, we're almost uh, almost unbreakable to, like, a, 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 a certain matter. You know, it's like – it's crazy. But, you know, I you know I want to tell you guys, like, I, you know, I, you guys are probably surprised that I planned it with both you guys. But I was like, you know what, I'm going to bring the two people on, 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 on the pod that – I feel the most drawn to because I share like, you know, that same energy with you guys, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I feel like, you know, probably the first 10 years I was here, I had a chip on my shoulder. I was like, yo, I should be doing that room. I should be doing that room. I'm just as good as that guy or whichever. Yeah, I mean, I don't was, anymore. Yeah. I mean, same, but that, that was a struggle. It was a, a struggle. Mentally, time. it was a fucking and I struggle. I think, think it, you know, it, it, it hurt me sometimes because I would be out with like a chip on, on my shoulder, you know, like no one, no one I could... I, I know I, I know I got that. So like, what's what's the problem? You know, like I know I got the the bottle the the spenders the people that support me. Why am I not? You know, and now mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know what? Whatever is gonna come. I mean, gonna Sydney come. said it perfectly yeah, earlier. She said, yeah. What you is know? meant for you will come. That's why I always cherish her friendship because you know I call her, I call you. I cherish your friendship because you know we can just talk each other out of the the whatever Driving negativity we yeah. got. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not driving into Lake Mead today, okay, Maria? Thank you for, you know. Um, listen, I would just say that when you said, can I, I want to say this, though. Like you said, do you get your flowers, right? Um, something that means a lot to me is when I'm at work and I'm standing, like, serving my section, I'll have a girl come up to me, excuse me. I'm like, yes. She's like, I'm so sorry to bother you. I'm like, 
She's like, are you the Bottle Girl Diaries girl? I'm like, oh my gosh. And then you're like, dang, like you forget. She's like, you're that YouTube girl, that Bottle Girl Diaries girl. She's like, you're so funny. Can I take a picture? And I'm like, wow, this is this is crazy to me because I just, I don't view myself in that light. Like I know that I'm on there. You but keep it pushing. I, I think sometimes I forget how many viewers, like there's one of my views that had 10,000 views. And um, if I could say this, it would be that, you know what's crazy is when you start a business, you get more support than you do your random followers and strangers oh, yeah. than you do your friends. I'm telling you something right now. I love all my girls very, you know, much, but maybe my channel doesn't resonate for the way that they promote themselves on their, you know, Instagram or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But I just think it doesn't hurt to share somebody's flyer. It doesn't hurt to be like, hey, even though, you know, this, I check out my girl, you know, at, at this club or whatever. I think that too, too many people are concerned with, um, oh my God, if I shine some spotlight on Cindy, maybe it will be taken away from me. With that being said, what's next? Actually, you know, you're doing the uh, Las Ve uh, the uh, Vegas Golden Knights game tonight. I am. Correct? Let's yeah, go. shout out to you. I've never been you to know? a Golden Knights game. Nebula. There's your plug. She's, she's the DJ. Just don't play Nuck if you book. I feel like that would be nah. a little too aggressive for <laughs> no, them. No, I mean, nah, I mean we got to keep it, we gotta keep it, you know, fun. Kind of like family friendly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so like, we, we didn't keep it friendly. So, like, what do you don't play? Worry. Like, clean up, clean up. Like, what do you? Just what some fun EDM and high energy, you know, fun. It's style. hockey, you know. Yeah. That that that. I mean. Mighty Ducks. There you go. There you go. There you go. There yeah. you go. What about you, Cindy? What's next? <sighs> well, pretty much already said. You know, I want to create a platform for myself. I'm going to continue with Bottle Girl Diaries for now. I may shift some gears, um, but I do. No, nah, you got to keep that thing going. I, I know. I, I it's do. It's so impactful. Thank you. Extremely impactful. Come Thank on. you, but. The, the, I'm having, I'm not going to express it all right now, but I'm having some struggles, which I already kind of told you about it. But um, I'm kind of at that place in my life, though, in the next year or two. I want to settle down. Um, I dated every type of um, genre of guy that you can name. and um, Every genre of guy. Genre. Yeah. <laughs> Not genre, type. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Genre. Because men are like music. That's amazing. There's like, there's like yeah, I guess let's put a lower that. third yeah, right yeah. there with her, with her yeah. Instagram um, and DM her yeah. people. So. Yeah, but um, I, I'm ready to, you know, take that next step in my life, settle down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, date nights for me are no longer going to be doing Casamigos chugging contest. Um, I want to travel the world and I'd rather, you know, be making out on balconies than making out in the club. And um, <laughs> Me? I do. Want I, I, I'm not like, I just, just, you know, I'm just like, also make out in the club. But there's got to be the right one. Yeah. But it's got to be worth it. You know, um, it's worth it. I don't know. I think I'm done dating athletes, too. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, hopefully, but you never. I mean, not hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh wow! That was a whole yeah. That's a whole nother. But you know what? Episode. We'll save that for another episode. Yeah, that's a whole. That's a, that's a whole Bottle Girls diary right there. Th th that definitely is right there. But that's yeah, the I think uh, just setting yourself up is while you're while you're doing good somewhere else, you should be setting yourself up some like with another thing. You and, know? And parlay. I think, parlay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I didn't manage my money the best for a little while, but I'm doing really good now, and um, I have somebody helping me with that. So that's kind of where I'm at. Is like just making sure that I have enough for the next venture. Um, I'm still going to continue Bottle Girl Diaries for now, so. Um, no, yeah. you're, you're keeping that thing going. <laughs> but I Hell really yeah. do appreciate you having yeah, us on today. It was fun, a vibe, and I feel like very, uh, it's a great opportunity to be able to sit next to you, somebody that I've always looked up to since I moved to the city, and even to you, so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Even when I was like yeah. chugging like Ciroc back in the day when we first met, I used to drink peach Ciroc. What was wrong with me? Hey, you know? hey, peach Ciroc was hey, it. I did too. Peach Ciroc was the hot girl drink. I mean, hot boy drink. I too. mean, one one time yeah. I drank well, a whole bottle. Those years of, are over for me. I drank a whole bottle of Ciroc pineapple one time before I went out when I was in college, and the only thing I remember is like getting to the door, falling asleep in the bathroom, and waking back up in my my right. rooms up. You know. Ciroc was Ciroc was the vibe, man. It was the vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna close with this. When 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 you just said, you know, I fell asleep and here and I woke up here. I'll save this for another story, but I actually slept in front of the Luxor for six hours because I lost Franzen. <laughs> Franzen played at poetry back in the day, 
And then I remember I walked out, had no idea where I was at, and I ended up sleeping in the bushes in front of the Luxor. I, I woke up six hours stories. later, completely sweating because it was like 110 degrees out, dehydrated. Mind you, this is way before GPS was on phones. I had no idea how to get back to his house. <laughs> so we'll save that for another episode. Um, Maybe I'll have Franny on, but I appreciate y'all too for uh, for thanks, hopping on and, and for sharing, you know, your stories, you know, and you know, I mean, that's the premise of what we do here, like you know, on on, on this pod. It's what's called the full convo, you know. So obviously, we have a radio component, but you know, the big thing is like you know, I, I want people to you know, to be able to share their stories, like, you know, whatever that is, you know, just so other people can see what you guys are doing and at the same time, inspire somebody. Yeah. So. I mean, if you Hope want so. it, you got to go get it. Yeah. And I think we're all three of those, those kinds of people. So. Yep. 100%.